morning world it's a beautiful morning because it's not so warm like it used to be it's only 57 degree Fahrenheit so you get some fresh air <laughs> which hasn't happened in a while so I really really appreciate it um, <clears throat> this morning I want to teach you some real wisdom okay some wisdom that you don't get in your church because they don't understand who God is. That's a big fat problem that they have. Um, and I'm gonna show it to you in a very, very um, clear way, okay, that probably anybody would say, well, you know, that's not, not a big mystery revealed really, but it becomes a mystery because of the church dogmas. And you'll understand perfectly well when I'm telling you about it because it's gonna connect to other things that I've said before I've told you um, and I believe that's in the video uh, about Jesus Christ being the word of God's voice um, that God has devices in his heart and the Septuagint calls them legismoi that's in Psalms 33:11. the uh, some Bibles translate this as devices, other as thoughts. Yeah? So it says, The counsel of the Lord uh, shall stand forever, the thoughts of its heart, uh, his heart, unto all generations. So if, if there is a device in God's heart that's called legismoi, then that is what produces probably the wrong way, but that is the origin of or the no even better the place of abode of the logos of god's word and you're going to see when we analyze this with a few other septuagint scriptures that this essentially shows you that jesus christ is nothing else than the full revelation of the father to the world at the conception in mary's womb that's when it took place that's when this uh, Word of God came out of the depth of God and became flesh. I've said that so often, but you have to repeat this over and over again because people don't quite get it, but it'll get clearer as we talk. <clears throat> so what do we contest against? We know that we contest against the Trinitarian dogma, which says that Jesus Christ was a distinct person from God the Father called God the Son, standing next to him and saying, thank you for this body that you had the Holy Spirit, the third person, create for me for nine months, so let me go and grab that and go into the world. Totally off, and that's why you're not getting it. <laughs> okay, why am I using the Septuagint? Because it is Greek, and it's a very old Greek translation of the Hebrew. And many times when New Testament quotes from the Old Testament, it'll actually be the Septuagint uh, text family that it quotes from to the least if it not even quoted directly from the Septuagint I haven't researched that enough uh, I've read that Jesus most likely spoke Greek at least in the synagogues so it's a different topic but let's get into it so we know Jesus Christ is the Logos right and I told you in John 1 1 it says that the Logos was prostontheon so it was towards God or at God doesn't mean that it was a person next to God but it means that there was a time when the Logos was towards God in the beginning okay so let's figure out where the Logos was well I had a pivot verse before which is Job 37 verse 2 and all those reference that I'm giving you now if you're smart, you're going to write those down and learn them and you're going to analyze them in Hebrew and in the Septuagint. There's tools to do that on BibleHub.com or you can go to studybible.info slash interlinea. That's where you find the Apostolic Bible Polyglot, which is a Greek Septuagint interlinea, a great tool by Charles Vanderpoel. Put a lot of effort into it and he is the prime example that you don't have to make merchandise out of God. To work for him because that man he just um, translated that thing and pretty much gives it away for free as a PDF so I got to turn on my AC because 
my front window glasses here are getting a little bit okay so Charles Vanderpoel and he reads the whole thing on YouTube if you go on YouTube look for the channel apostolic Bible polyglot subscribe to it and listen to these things because he reads from the interlinea tells you about Greek words it's awesome so <clears throat> Write down Job 37.2 and Psalms 33.11 because they are pivot points. And we know that Jesus is the word of God which was spoken also in creation. So, so the means by which God gives life to the world is always the word, the Logos. God's speaking, okay? It's not a person next to the Father. It's God's speaking which is alive, powerful, uh, penetrates to the division of spirit and soul, yada, yada, yada. Okay, it's going to be the judge in the end because that word became flesh. So, in Job 37.2, you have something very interesting because you see that actually the Logos, which is spoken, is a mele tau. Yeah, I mentioned that before. That's the word 3191, I believe, point 0.1 or point 0.2. But you can just go to G3191 and you'll get it. So it means meditation, in a sense of, you know, to premeditate. It's used in the Textus Receptus of Mark 13, 11, when Jesus says, when they take you to courts, do not premeditate on what you shall say. So words are premeditated as militao, and that happens in the logismoi of the cardia, of the heart. So the heart of the speaker premeditates with his logismoi, a militao, which when it's spoken, is a logos expression to the hearer. So, that's the first verse. Then, in Psalms 49.3, you can see that that logos which is spoken, as an effect, has wisdom in the listener produced. So when I speak to you, something that I premeditated in the logismoi of my cardia, yeah, my militao, if I have that ex erco my ex, so exit in motion out of the depth of my heart to you, yeah, my spirit pulls all that up, carries those words out, I speak them to you, then they should have the effect of giving you wisdom, okay? They should, um, not quite the right temperature yet. <laughs> They should have that effect. So the art is to use your legismoi in your cardia in such a way that the militao expressed in the logos produces the sophia intended in you. Meaning that you get what I'm thinking here, here, actually here. It's in the cardia, okay? And we're gonna get more down to the bottom of this and then make the connections again to who Jesus is. So, <clears throat> then it says, again, that the, these are the militao of my heart, okay? So, like you saw in Job 37.2, the militao ex erco my ek, the mouth, yeah? So, they exit the mouth. Those were already existing in the cardia, in the heart, yeah? Because the legismoi pondered upon them, whatever you want to call it. I never want to say originate because it sounds like it wasn't there before, but it was because it's essentially an expression of your soul that you're trying to uh, bring across. So in uh, Psalm 77 verse 6, it talks about meditation in the night on your bed. You know, like he militao by night with his heart. Yeah, so again, here's the connection that it comes from the cardia, okay? From the logismoi of the cardia. And um, <clears throat> it says, you know, in Hebrew you have these double expressions, this poetry, where it says two things uh, just with different wordings, yeah? In, in two following verses. So here it says, militao by night with my heart, and then it says it in another way, to converse or to till with your spirit. So that's what it is essentially. And this word to till, T-I-L-L, -L, 
And that is, means actually to cultivate, to prepare. Okay, so it's like when you cultivate the earth to bring forth something, right? So your spirit cultivating is the same thing as your cardia um, meditating, militao, okay? Which happens in the logismoi of your heart, producing the logos expression out of your mouth. So there is a transition taking place from spiritual cultivating of the soul. First Corinthians chapter 2 says, it is the spirit that searches the deep things of God. Okay, so it's the same thing here. Um, the, the, as our spirit searches out the deep things of our own heart and cultivates it, it puts together a militao which we express with the effect of producing Sophia wisdom in the listener. Yeah? Then when you go to uh, Psalms 19 verse 4, um, it talks about oracles, okay? Logia. And you can hear again the word is logos. Logia of your mouth and again militao of your heart. So the utterance of your mouth is nothing else but the militao of your heart, which is nothing else than the cultivating of your spirit. So you have all these transitions, as you can see, of the same thing, essentially, expressing your soul. Okay, that's why Jesus said, out of the heart come forth the evil things of the man. And then, you know, they, they come out of the mouth. That's why by your words you will be condemned or justified so <clears throat> this cold air conditioning now see when I when I turn on the, the regular uh, what do you call it you know the wind <laughs> so without air conditioning the fan right sorry <clears throat> um, then it gets too warm because it's colder than that but when I put on the air conditioning then my window gets all. So now we're gonna make a very, very important connection. And as you can see, I wrote this down and I'm kind of reading this from notes because I took screenshots. I wish I would have time to put together videos dedicated, you know, like make these nice screens and show you here, here, here. I just don't have time for it right now. That's the big problem, but the last connection now that you can make is Job 27.4 and that is just so important that connection and then we're gonna tell you why this is so important in regards to Jesus it says that the lips speak yeah a militao of the psyche the lips speak a meditation. What is that? That's a Logos, right? It says the lips speak a militao. Yeah, we know where that comes from by cultivating with the spirit. And it says, I have to read this again, that it is a militao of the tsuke. Now, what is the tsuke? That is the soul. So now you know what the legismoi of the heart, what that is part of. That actually is your soul. Now you know how soul and spirit act together. You, your spirit cultivates in your heart using the legismoi to produce a militao of your soul, which then becomes as an expression of your mouth a Logos producing Sophia wisdom in the listener. Now, <laughs> why is that so super, super important? Because it shows you Jesus in the beginning was that mirror image of God in his heart. That cultivating of the spirit, the spirit, so... <laughs> 
searches the deep things of God. Okay, so the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, going through the deepest depth of God, which is infinitely deep, inside God's soul, heart, that is where Jesus Christ came from. That's how hidden he was. That's how, I mean, I can't even put that into words. What kind of a cartoon and comic do they make out of it? Like, God the Son and, and said to God the Father, mm, they lie, okay? They lie because Jesus doesn't reveal this to arrogant Roman empires to make it a state religious creed that everybody has to go by. Um, but he reveals this to babes and it's simple it's in the Bible make the connections so when essentially the word that comes out of you has the origin in the heart and is a militao of the soul like I told you the Spirit of God you know goes into all the depth that's where Jesus abides so he is the soul of God revealed to the outside when that becomes flesh what does that mean God brought forth a human son out of himself I mean is that so difficult to understand no uh, the essence out of uh, the substance of the triune God who is a being and not a person but it's actually three persons in the Godhead so the second divine person took on the essence out of Mary in order to assume you know my cardia would love to put together a few swear words like shit <laughs> to express yeah to enlighten you give you the wisdom how this stuff must anger God yeah this this twisting <laughs> of the truth God had a soul split like everybody that has a child when you have a child yeah that child carries part of your soul I mean that's not so difficult to understand is it so when God's word comes out of his heart, why would you, like in the Belgic confession of these stupid Calvinists, right, say the soul of the Son of God was out of Mary? Really? So in all conclusion, you want to tell me either now he had two souls or where did it come from? Because the soul is the blood, okay? So, if Jesus was a two essence, two unity in person, uh, 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 and his flesh and blood came out of the virgin, if the blood is equated with the soul in the Bible, you're saying no soul came out of God from Jesus, nothing. That was just some spiritual essence, you know? You're lying okay you are lying and I'm telling you you're going down to hell if you lie to people like that especially when you no not especially let me put it the other way when you teach people that and say you have to believe this to go to heaven or you're eternally doomed then you are gonna go to hell because it's not the truth now I don't want to sit in the judge's seat here to say what's gonna happen to those who just blindly followed <clears throat> Because that's not up to me. Judge not lest you be judged. Not going to do that. But I showed you very clearly, like Acts 20:28 20, says, Jesus redeemed us with the blood of God. Acts 20:28. 20, <laughs> the blood is the soul. The soul is where the devices of God's heart put together by cultivating in the spirit the Logos, which is the expression and the word became flesh. It doesn't have nothing to do with Mary. Nothing. Okay? The Holy Son of God poured his soul out into death. So he had a unique one. Where did it come from? It came out of the soul of his father, God. 
What does it mean? They're equal. Do they share the same name? Yes, they do. <laughs> so, I hope that this produces some Sophia in you. I mean, I'll leave it up to you if you rather go back on Sunday to your stupid meeting and be like singing all this unbiblical stuff about your triune thing that doesn't even exist. And it is a thing. They say it's a being. Yeah? It's not a person. So, I don't know. It angers me, okay? And I believe that that's godly anger. Because people don't see the plain stuff. So here, again. Yeah. Psalms 33.11 is missing. 